This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so today we're here to check out a uh, compressor failure we had, an oil failure. And we're gonna take a look and see what's going on with it. It appears the oil switch tripped. The guy on call last night reset it, which I don't believe this one can be reset remotely. And uh, so we're gonna go and see what we got going on here. So let's get up here and take a look. So right here we have one of our nicer, bigger racks. So we come up to here. You can see that we have oil failure here on three. Come over to our controller. You can see that the guy locked out the actual control right here. So we come into alarms and we can see that last night we had an oil failure at 2035. And then he logged in and looked at it about an hour and 24 minutes later. He uh, reset the alarms, had an oil failure again, and then he just locked it out in the computer. With this type of system here, the oil control, the pin johns in here you see uh, cannot be reset, doesn't even show trip because what happens is when it trips out, the actual Emerson control up here doesn't turn it back on and it just completely disengages it. So I opened it up and I didn't record for some reason, I forgot to hit record, but this breaker was tripped in the halfway position. I ended up checking the contactor, which you would have seen, but you know, it didn't record. One of the things we want to be very careful about here is that this is actually running on 480 volts, which you'll be able to see the actual leg to leg here. Phase average 484 volts. There we go. 482, 486, 487. I uh, replaced this back on 10, 24, 23. So we know that's working. Uh, but the problem with this device here is we don't have it wired up to actually monitor the other side of the contactor because you'd have to have one on each one. So what I want to do now is I want to check this contactor and see if it's pitted. You can see there's a burn mark right there on that right side a little bit. You can kind of see a little bit there on that bottom. Right, definitely a little something in there. Was it enough to single phase the unit? I don't know. Is that even the problem? So the next thing I want to do, I want to check my resistance on the actual compressor. Well, we want to check our leads here. We want to make sure that we're actually zero ohms. Now, I've already done did it, but so that you can see it, we've gone up here to the top. I'm finding a, we can go leg to leg. We got really nothing. So once I've done leg to leg, I go down here to an actual good ground. And we have three volts, which is really nothing and nothing and nothing. So the breaker is dead. Coming over here now to resistance, I want to check leg to leg. So we've got 0.7 there to there. 0.7, one to three. And I have 0.7, two to three. So I'm not thinking uh, that we're shorted to ground. Uh, when you get to the higher voltage, uh, the three phase, the resistance is really low. Uh, that's, that's not a very uncommon. So I wanted to make sure I checked for any shorts to ground before I just flipped on the brake. Um, it being 480, it can be a little scary because you know you can have a uh, arc flash. You want to make sure that uh, you don't have that. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and turn it back on. Let's go ahead and close the door. So that's closed, or that's uh, on, let's close the door. That way if it blows, it's safer that way. I am gonna go in here and tell it, the oil sensor, we're gonna go ahead and get the next and go to OK, over. Okay, let's go ahead and tell this compressor that it can turn on. It's an override now, so we're gonna go to override, say no. Off, off. Now what it's going to do, if it is calling, it's now going to energize this actual control. And you can see this control right here actually has a red. Let's hit reset. Boom, the compressor just kicked on. 
can't hear anything horrible. Now that we know it didn't blow, oil failure on three is still there. Contact is pulled in, let's check amp draw. Pull in 20 amps. Voltage drop across the contactor. Top to bottom. 0 0.038. 0 0.048. 0 0.046. Point on bottom. Crosswise. 477. Top. 77, 2 to 3, 480 from the bottom, 2 to 3, 481, 1 to 3, 484, and 1 to 3, 480, it fluctuates somewhat. Now, like I said, this thing here, it's hit the alarm reset. This doesn't do anything, doesn't control anything, so it's not, you know, this thing reset and now it's running. Now let's see what our oil pressure is. We want to know what our net oil pressure is. What that means is the actual pressure coming out of our pump here minus our actual pressure in the crankcase. I'm not going to go to the crankcase. There's not a whole lot of difference between it unless that filter screen's in the back is plugged. Now some of those people out there might get all pissy about it. If you also notice here, our head fanning, fan fan, our head cooling fan here, which was just replaced March 24, it's not spinning. So something happened. Did that fan short or anything? Because these have a tendency to short sometimes, and it looks like it is powered off of possibly a compressor. Not usually though. Usually it's powered off of a. Uh, step down transformer. So we need to check that over really good, see if that maybe is what cost it. I like to use my oil, this for oil gauge because it's less hose. And then I like using my valve port aggressor tool here. This tends to make less of a mess. Once again, you can always get uh, any of these two tools here, or a lot of, pretty much about anything I've got. At True Tech Tools, save yourself. Uh, currently it's about 6%. They had to do some reductions. Uh, it used to be 8, but trying to keep the prices uh, accurate, not just artificially inflate them to deflate them. So uh, that is something that did change. But use a discount code survival at checkout to save 6% on everything. So let's go ahead and screw this on. We've got it cracked crank outwards so that it's not going to impress. Let's go ahead and screw it on. There we go. And now let's go ahead and screw this in. Look at that. Pounds. Let's see what our actual suction pressure is. We've got about 17.9. Right around 50 pounds, uh, actual 50 pounds of differential there. You only need 5 or 10 pounds on average, but you should average usually 40, 45. So we know we've got plenty there. Now there is a possibility that, you know, it's got in it, but the oil level right there is at the halfway mark, which see that glass got tightened a little too much. Crack. The oil don't look too bad, it's a darker color, but it's not not a dark black. Uh, so we're wiggling our switch, see if we got a trip here. But like I said, what really caused it was when that compressor didn't pump because it didn't have a breaker working. The issue would have been the fact that, yeah, it didn't have a differential because the breaker was actually tripped. The compressor is not pulling stupid amperage, stupid high, you know, basically meaning it's not pulling stupid high. Uh, we can stop it. We can go into inrush. We can compare inrush to the actual locked rotor and see where we're at there. A little more leery, you know, doing this since we had an issue earlier. Let's go inrush. Let's turn it on, step off to the side. Head. Okay, in rush was 134 uh, 
134 amps. 138, sorry. Come down here, lock rotor, 138 amps. Man, oh man, you can't ask for better than that. 138 amps, dead on the money. Not bad. We can try that on one of the other ones here. Presser off. Zero out. That pressure, it's always starting against that kind of pressure. So don't be too horribly concerned that, you know, oh my goodness, it, uh, you're short cycling. I'm not like kicking it on, 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 off, on, on, off, you know. Let's do it again, turn away. 124 amps. Let's go to this last one. Okay, let's turn away again. This is the first leg. 129 amps. So we know that we're not pulling an absurd amount. That is the Testo 770-3. This is their best one in the Testo line. The thing I like about this meter is the fact that it gives you everything and that clamp there is pretty slick. Um, it's held up really good. Uh, awesome. Uh, also, that magnet comes with the kit, whereas the, the lesser one, like if you just go with the 770-1, that one is missing a lot of the features, where this one here has, you know, wattage, it has uh, capacitance, microamps, uh, inrush, a few other things like that. It's been a pretty good meter so far. I love my flukes, and, you know, obviously the fluke does some readings faster, but from what I've seen when I've compared to Ampro and stuff like that, it's been pretty, uh, pretty accurate. All right, this point here, I want to know why that fan didn't run. Did that have anything to do with the trip? I don't know. I'm trying to find the step down transformer for that thing. They have to turn some things off. I want to know why that head cooling fan's not working though. It definitely is kind of a big deal. I'm going to leave that off for a second. I want to get in here and look at this uh, wiring. So I got this plate off over here. Let's take a look at these wires. One of the things I wanted to see is why that head cooling fan not running. So we look in at these little blue wire nuts which are really kind of small for the wire gauge we got. It appears they come out. I'll have to come on the other side to see. I also wanted to see do we have any shorts there. It does not appear to be. Do we have anything there? It does not appear to be. It appears that it's okay. We got blue and white coming up here to the top. Let's see where that goes to. So going to foldage here, if we go across this one here that's pulled in, this end switch I believe they're using for the fan. We got zero volts just like you'd figure. This one here, zero volts just like you'd figure. This one here, 237. So the fan's not working because of the switch. We're gonna go get a new switch, new contactors if you're done with it. Lay that down here gently. I think that piece there on the edge is low. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's, yeah, that is broke. Okay, so the edge on the side of that contactor there is broke. That's kind of peculiar. I wonder if it chattered or something. So we got the new uh, contactor here. I went ahead and got the new auxiliary switch mounted on the side big thing you want to make sure is that it actually goes up and down like it's supposed to with the actual contactor. You got normally open on the first set of contacts, normally close on the others. That's bullshit. That right there is the dumb crap I can't stand. See, it's like damn wires underneath there. It's got to bend upwards. You got a straggle there.
So we got that. Look at this fan. Look at that. Imagine that, right? It's actually working. Let's check the amp draw on it. 1.09, so that seems about right. Still got the main power off. Let's go ahead and check this one more time here. Let's go ahead and kick that on. There we go. Turn away. 37 still looking pretty normal I don't know at this point we're gonna let it run for a little bit and see what happens look at that so no oil all over the place it traps most of it in here takes us over the trash can makes it a lot easier to get your measurements and not make a big mess it's been running non-stop now with no problems at all. Uh, I can't wait all day. Amperage, lock rotors, all that is fine. We've got our panel back here in the back, completely back into place. Everything, uh, for the most part, looks pretty good on this one. We got 20% rack level. I don't know what more you can ask for. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap that one up. Basically what we had was a tripped breaker. We didn't know why it tripped. We checked it back to the contactor, had some pitting going on. Also the auxiliary switch on the contactor was not working. That's why the head cooling fan wasn't working. Um, we checked the electrical windings to ground, winding to winding. We checked the inrush, compared that to lock rotor amps. All those things showed that it was electrically working the way it should. We had nothing to ground. We had 0.7 between each leg. Everything was equal, everything looked normal and uh, you know it ran the whole time we we're here now granted it may trip out again but you know there's nothing we can do at this point other than you know give it a good hour or two see what's going on and if i don't get it then we'll obviously catch it when the uh, when it fails out otherwise we could waste a lot of time here for nothing we're not going to condemn a very expensive compressor unless we know for certain that it's bad and uh, like i said the contactor's cheap assurance it never hurts to have a new contactor on there and that one there is uh brand new along with the auxiliary switch so if you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, please hit the like button down below. Consider subscribing. Till next time, everybody. We'll catch you on the next one. Later.